I am pleased to be a moderator of the first week's plenary discussion for this four week seminar on security and justice coordination. This program is part of the Africa Center's growing line of work on countering transnational organized crime in Africa. Um, so by way of introduction, about a year ago in January of 2020, we held an initial multinational seminar on countering transnational organized crime um, with one of our institutional partners, the National Center for Strategic and Security Studies in Niger. And participants from 18 different countries across the continent came to NMA to discuss the drivers and consequences of different forms of crime as well as African security and justice sector officials responses to transnational organized crime. And so uh, in sum, it was at this initial meeting where we determined with our colleagues um, uh, from different African countries that it could be important and useful to facilitate some practical exchange about the strategic value of coordination across the security, justice and other sectors that are essential for countering transnational organized crime. Participants in that seminar were able to provide and share a variety of examples of coordination efforts that are already underway in their countries, in their regions, but they also pointed to some significant challenges to further strengthening coordination. And in particular, dismantling transnational organized crime networks often requires joint actions by military law enforcement and justice officials, among others. And this requires careful design, implementation, and planning across different agencies and ministries. To have the most lasting and effective results, those actions often need to have been designed as well in concert with communities, civil society, and regional and continental bodies that are concerned with these issues as well. And achieving this kind of coordination is, of course, a complex and a difficult endeavor. On the one hand, criminal networks consist of actors who are extremely nimble, and they adapt to African states' efforts to curtail their activities. And they may even shift geographic zones of operation or shift between uh, the specific criminal markets where they're operating in relation to how states are trying to crack down on them. On the other hand, African states themselves are bound in their efforts to counter transnational organized crime by governance principles like sovereignty, rule of law, and professional ethics as they're seeking to dismantle criminal networks. And these could in fact be key to developing responses that sustainably counter crime, but they also give rise to some challenging asymmetries in how state actors and criminal actors are able to operate. So to build the resilience of African states to transnational organized crime, state security and justice actors are already trying, um, but must continue to anticipate the ways that criminal networks are adapting consistently, constantly, there's also a need for innovating new ways to respond to transnational organized crime across a variety of security, justice, and other related domains. So for counter TOC efforts to be sustainable, they also need to address security development and governance factors that lie at the root of why transnational organized crime networks survive and even thrive in some cases. This is where coordination comes in handy. It can help a variety of stakeholders share perspectives and work together to tackle an issue of common interest. And ultimately, coordination can be a precursor to effective cooperation for achieving national security goals like your country may have in relation to its national security strategy or other policies and plans to counter transnational organized crime. When it is done well, coordination will help the various institutions and agencies that are involved in the effort to counter crime to achieve an effect that's larger than the sum of its parts. Coordination can also help to minimize competition and enhance complementarity among the different institutions and people involved in countering transnational organized crime. All of this can in turn help to solve long term problems that no single institution or agency could deal with as well alone. So that's the motivation behind talking about coordination for four weeks. Throughout this virtual academic program, we hope um, that this will help um, you to understand the range of current initiatives underway in Western and Southern Africa to strengthen security and justice sector coordination in countering transnational organized crime. We hope that the program will also assist in assessing how well current coordination efforts fit into regional, national, or local level strategies and approaches to countering transnational organized crime. And we hope through this program there's an opportunity being offered to compare experiences uh, that the military law enforcement officials and judicial uh, uh, justice officials have encountering transnational organized crime. 
Uh, we also hope to provide um, an opportunity to compare perspectives on coordination within and across country borders in both urban and rural settings and in relation to both men and boys and women and girls who may experience transnational organized crime or be involved in developing state responses to countering crime. Now, I know that some of you here have experience with human trafficking and human smuggling. Others may do work on counter narcotics, counter poaching or natural resource crimes. And some of you, I also realize, think about transnational organized crime more generally in your work without specializing in one kind of criminal market in particular. So we trust that the variety of perspectives that the participants are bringing to our plenary sessions and to the discussion groups throughout the four weeks of this program will enrich the debate, the peer learning, the experience sharing, and the solution seeking that we hope to support you um, in engaging in over the next four weeks while you're here with us. Please visit the program website whose link has been emailed to you. It's also provided in the chat. You can there, you can view the pre-program content if you have not already. I uh, personally recorded a pre-program video for you that provides an overview, some introductory material on the dynamics of transnational organized crime in Western and Southern Africa and um, provided an initial discussion on coordination and how it fits into efforts to dismantle criminal networks. Several aspects of coordination are important to countering transnational organized crime, and we will spend each week looking at um, different dimensions of this. In week one today, with our panelists here on camera, we will discuss cross-border coordination between different countries, security and justice actors. In week two, we will move on to look at interagency and interministerial coordination on the national level. In the third and fourth week, we move to coordination efforts that are rooted in local citizen and community perspectives, experiences, and approaches to dealing with transnational organized crime in both urban and rural areas. So week three is about urban and rural areas and strategies um, that may be specific um, to those contexts or that may cross cut those contexts. And then week four looks at citizen and community inclusion and in coordination efforts. The program will also draw upon pre-program content, so the video and the syllabus. Um, we will then have virtual plenary sessions like these and every Wednesday, small group discussion sessions. So we hope that the discussion groups, which we have made regionally focused, we have some discussion groups on West Africa, some on Southern Africa. We hope that these will provide useful opportunities to exchange lessons learned on coordination and to further develop um, some ideas um, new ideas about enhancing coordination that you may have and that um, you may be able to share with your colleagues. There are also many friendships that often get built in seminars like these. Um, that, that This has certainly been the case in the past um, with Africa Center Programming or even WhatsApp groups that can form amongst participants as they get to know each other in the small group discussions. So we encourage you to explore these options as it makes sense to you as you move through the program. Let me finally, also acknowledge the experts and colleagues who will be facilitating the discussion groups every Wednesday for this program. You can find their biographies as well as those of all of our esteemed panelists in the biographies document available on the program page. Turning to this week's content, let me introduce this first topic, how to use regional and cross-border coordination to counter transnational organized crime. Cross-border coordination takes many forms it can involve the regional economic communities. It can involve bilateral or multilateral relationships between a particular country and its immediate neighbors. It can involve um, interregional or have international elements as well. So our objectives today are to understand why regional and cross-border coordination um, is important to countering transnational organized crime, particularly in Western and Southern Africa, the regions where you all come from. We hope that we will help you to assess the current strengths and weaknesses of coordination to counter transnational organized crime, and perhaps identify some key strategy, policy, and technical elements of cross-border coordination that influence African state resilience to transnational organized crime. Okay. Maintenant, je suis heureuse d'accueillir now I'm happy to welcome two exceptional and experienced 
experts who will help us to begin our exchanges on six points. When you have, when you have read their biographies or when you see them, you'll find them on the website. I would just emphasize some specific aspects of their biographies. First, let me introduce Mr. Mark yeah. Dewey. He works for the Institute for Security Studies in Pretoria, South Africa. There he is the technical coordinator of the ENACT project focused on enhancing Africa's response to transnational organized crime. In this capacity, he coordinates and manages the five uh, regional organized crime observatories in Africa that provide research analysis and recommendations about transnational organized crime that inform the organized crime index. The OCI is a new tool that provides data and analysis about all African countries' experiences with criminality and resilience to crime. Um, and you'll see more information about this index in your syllabus as well. Prior to coordinating and managing the ISS's five regional organized crime observatories, uh, Mr. Aoi also did terrorism research for the Institute for Security Studies. And he served as the political affairs officer at the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons in The Hague, as well as officer in charge of the African Union Strategic Security Unit and Counterterrorism Analysis. Le Dr. Abdurrahman Yang. Il est chef Dr. Colonel uh, Abdurrahman Yang is head of the Regional Security Division of the ECOWAS Commission. He has more than 15 years experience within this ECOWAS Commission from September 2008 to date. He has been the permanent secretary of the Committee of Chiefs of Police of West Africa. And before that, he was responsible of programs in the area of light weapons. He has also been responsible for security and safety, uh, marine security and safety, uh, the uh, anti-terrorist uh, uh, activities, reforming the security and defense sector, and fighting organized transnational crime. He's also been coordinator of the Committee of Head of Security and Intelligence for ECOWAS and focal point for the interregional network of the Gulf of Guinea the Police Information System for West Africa, WAPIS, and for strengthening criminal justice systems in West Africa and Central Africa, SWAMS. Before that, he was legal counsel for the Armed Forces of Senegal and director of training at the Gendarmerie School. With that, let me turn to our panelists for a moderated conversation. Let me turn to um, Mr. Ailey first. Could you please explain why cross-border coordination of security and justice efforts to counter transnational organized crime is important for African states in their attempts to build resilience to threats? You have about um, seven minutes to introduce us to that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kelly. Uh, let me also take this opportunity to uh, welcome uh, uh, the participants and colleagues uh, joining. It is uh, always a great pleasure uh, and honor for me uh, to join the ACSS uh, community. Uh, and I wish to express my deep appreciation uh, for the invitation extended to the Institute for Security Studies um, to be part of this uh, important uh, process. Um, the ACSS uh, is doing uh, an impressive work in promoting knowledge and awareness of the true dimension of organized crime in Africa and how states can develop or strengthen their resilience against the threat. Um, organized crime uh, has uh, bourgeoned uh, over the past uh, two decades uh, and it has become so big and complex that uh, it is swallowing up uh, other forms of crimes. Uh, today, we talk of uh, the nexus between organized crime and terrorism, organized crime and corruption, organized crime and conflict, and so on and so on. Uh, the fight against organized crime must therefore be 
at the center of effort aimed at controlling crime, uh, resolving conflicts, and promoting peace and security, particularly within the context of the uh, African Union silencing the guns objective. We now have a better understanding of the nature and character of organized crime in Africa, thanks to the Enact Organized Crime Index funded by the European Union. The Enact project itself is a European Union funded facility dedicated to enhance Africa's response to transnational organized crime. Uh, it is implemented by a consortium of three partners of which the Institute for Security Studies, Interpol, and the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. The project works to mitigate the impact of um, transnational organized crime, TOC, on development, governance, security, and the rule of law. It prioritizes research, technical assistance, and capacity building to African states and Pan-African institutions. Through its regional observatories, the project monitors on an annual or a continual basis, development and trends in organized crime. I'm here with my colleague, Mr. Alan Gary, who is the regional uh, organized crime observatory coordinator for West Africa. Uh, I am also the regional coordinator for Southern Africa. Um, and the work that we do is uh, really to monitor um, organized crime trends uh, and other development relating to the way countries are responding to it. Since its launch in September 2019, the Organized Crime Index uh, has become an important tool for measuring the threats of organized crime and resilience in Africa. So that you know the fragility or vulnerability spots and resilience or progress in state responses to the phenomenon. It should therefore not be used as a tool to point fingers, but rather as a guide for policies and actions against organized crime. Uh, that's a key message that we want uh, people who visit the index to note that it is not there to point fingers um, at countries uh, or where organized crime is, but it is really there to help countries prioritize resources so that um, the response to organized crime is more targeted and tailor-made. The index uh, also helps us uh, understand the spread and distribution of the different, type, uh, different crimes in Africa. For example, we know that the criminality resilience ratio is highest in East Africa, followed by West Africa, West and Central Africa, while Southern and North Africa are relatively balanced. Um, with almost equal resilience and criminality ratio. We also know um, where the, cr the crime market or the criminal markets are located. Um, for example, human trafficking and smuggling are more widely spread across the continent through uh, uh, though with significant pocket of concentration in West and, Cent uh, in West and North Africa. Non-renewable resource crimes are more concentrated in West and Central Africa, with significant trends in South, in South Africa and Zimbabwe. Flora and fauna crimes are concentrated in Sub-Saharan Africa, with very significant or very insignificant trends in North Africa. Heroin trafficking is concentrated in the eastern and southern coasts of the continent why cocaine trafficking is heavily concentrated in West Africa. Cannabis and arms trafficking seem to be a continental phenomenon, while synthetic drugs have pockets of concentration in West, Central, East, and North and South, Southern Africa. The index also helped us understand uh, the key characteristics of organized crime in Africa. Um, for example, we know that no single, no single crime is confined to one country. And um, the, the, the types of crime that we are dealing with are highly transnational, 
which means they cross borders or which means they affect uh, more than two countries at least. For a long time, the scourge of uh, cash in transit has in South Africa, for example, was treated as if it was purely a South African crime. But recent empirical research have demonstrated links with countries like Zimbabwe and Mozambique and even beyond, meaning that cash in transit crime might occur more in South Africa, but they might have their contours and other tentacles in other countries within the region. Another key attribute of organized crime is the important role played by border communities. Communities linking two or more countries have become extremely vulnerable to cross-border or transnational crimes. The Liptako Goma region in the Sahel, for example, the Lake Chad Basin uh, region, especially, um, especially the town of uh, Baga in Nigeria, and numerous other examples uh, have shown the geostrategic importance of border communities as conduits of transnational crimes. Even in a time of growing cyberspace, which undermines geographic borders, border communities remain important as a physical habitat for criminal networks. Boko Haram, for example, has exploited this attribute in the Lake Chad Basin. Uh, Al Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb has utilized the Algerian borders with Mali and Mauritania as a hideout. Cabo de Gado region, the northern region of Mozambique, linking Tanzania, has also recently become conducive for violent extremism and drug trafficking. Again, all emphasizing the key role played by uh, border communities. Because of the highly transnational nature of organized crime, no single country is capable of defeating these complex networks alone. Unrestricted cross-border coordination become a sine non for any inroad into curbing uh, such crimes. Uh, I think Kat, you 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 explain it uh, better in terms of the role that coordination plays. Um, we've not seen the context in which coordination is absolutely important, and countries uh, have to some extent responded favorably in terms of coming up with various coordination models that we'll look at in our subsequent questions. I thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Martin. Thank you for that um, introduction to the index and um, for that initial answer on why cross-border coordination matters to all of us. I would like to turn my attention to Dr. Da. Uh, Dr. Da. Uh, could you please uh, describe the uh, political instruments and the technical tools of coordination, of regional coordination, to, in order to transcend the uh, trans transnational organized crime, especially in the region of West Africa? Thank you very much, sir. And uh, please, could you activate your microphone? We would be grateful if you could turn on your mic. Thank you very much. Can you hear me clearly? Thank you. We can hear you very well. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kelly, for giving me the floor, the floor and for providing me with the opportunity to express myself regarding this, uh, this of course, uh, platform. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I had the opportunity to express myself in 2004. And uh, today we are uh, gathering today to talk about uh, transnational organized crime. This is very essential for our region. And I think we're talking about uh, serious issues here. Uh, you have asked me to describe the uh, political and illegal tools and, and coordination uh, tools in order to, to transcend transnational organized uh, crime in the in the region. I have presented uh, 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 some some tools uh, uh, at the ECOWAS in, in 1975 to say, and I said very clearly that at the beginning, at, uh, especially at ECOWAS, we have essentially, uh, in terms of security, uh, presented two essential tools, uh, the, protocol, the protocol of 1978 and the protocol uh, in assistance uh, relating, pertaining to defense, uh, and that was uh, in, in 1981. 
but with of course uh, as time went by we have uh, developed other uh, tools and we have developed and we have been able to create a basis a basic tool and that was the uh, p protocol for prevention mechan mechanisms and uh, and of course maintaining a peace and security uh, with uh, that was like a basic phenomenon that uh, focuses on uh, peace and security uh, in 1993 we have provided like a, a a guide a guide and we have focus in security and peace in our region uh, and we have presented some tools of intervention military intervention and we have thought about the necessity at ECOWAS level to uh, to uh, create like article number 58 that was that was mainly focusing on regional security and that was very important so of course the explosion that followed uh, the 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 berlin wall have uh, has created uh, some internal conflicts as you may know and we have seen some violence uh, emerging and we have started to ask questions regarding uh, this uh, phenomena uh, in 1998 uh, we have declared uh, of course uh, an article uh, regarding the importation export and import of arms and weapons and we have focused on this phenomenon in 1999 i said very clearly that uh, we have focused on uh, prevention mechanisms and we have also adopted uh, a code of conduct in order to focus mainly uh, at, at this at this aspect uh, at the observatory we have asked all the states to put in place a national commission to struggle against uh, this process this effort of uh, of development uh, and this efforts that we have these efforts that we have invested and that uh, we have tried to put in place uh, have focused on the on certain aspects in the region and it led us to develop uh, together uh, inside the protocol on the de de democracy and governance some elements uh, that were very essential uh, so we have focused on a policy that was mainly focused on prevention uh, this has led us uh, later on to uh, uh, to focus in 1993 on the creation of a, 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 a commission of uh, uh, at the african uh, African uh, West Africa at the ECOS level, so at the continent of Africa, we have also uh, agreed to put in place uh, certain uh, aspects at ECOS. And in 2006, we have come up with the declaration, declaration, and which has uh, the sound was cut. Sorry. Oh, it looks like. Okay. Ah, uh, vous êtes là. Okay. Dés Désolé, Dr. Bien. Il y avait une coupure, je crois. Uh, après que vous avez évoqué uh, le, le comité. After you have uh, talked about the committee of chiefs of police. So we stopped after the uh, committee of chiefs of police in 2003, etc. cetera. And you have spoken about ECOWAS, and then you said there was uh, the, the formation of a committee of uh, chiefs of police. I said very clearly that uh, in 2003, we have we have like uh, chiefs of states and governments uh, made a decision to transform this uh, chiefs of police into of, of ECOWAS and to focus principally uh, on the on the specialized committee and it was transferred inside the ECOWAS and at this level and in 2008. I have become the permanent secretary of the ECOWAS, and uh, which which was the committee at the committee of chiefs of police in 2006. The declaration for light weapons uh, has been focused on, and we have uh, uh, focused on the weapons of small caliber. And starting from 2008, we have we have tried to have a uh, a general reflection upon the instruments that we try to develop uh, at the legal level at the at the, at the level of prevention uh, of uh, and we have uh, all uh, come up to the conclusion that it was necessary to establish the uh, framework of uh, of uh, uh, ECOWAS uh, framework that we have adopted in 2008 of course we have taken into account the evolution of the of certain phenomena, criminal phenomena and environmental phenomena. We have also uh, uh, 
thought about the questions of immigration. We have also paid special importance to certain aspects pertaining to cyber criminality. And in 2009, particularly in May, ECOWAS has developed a document uh, that guidelines that were in, it was a guideline at the ECOWAS level, and it was uh, at the regional and political level to uh, pertaining to uh, the aspect of uh, prevention. And uh, we have, of course, uh, uh, focus on three elements and we have tried to focus on the development and, exp and expansion of criminality uh, of uh, transactional organized crime. Uh, let's say that we have mainly focused on cyber criminality at the ECOWAS level. Uh, before that, a little bit, we have also tried to pursue and to think very, uh, very well about the prevention, prevention of transactional organized crime. And in 2008, we have adopted a, an approach uh, that was mainly regional uh, for the uh, political declaration uh, in order to prevent drugs. And so we have some teams that were working at this level more specifically. Similarly, uh, we have thought about phenomena relating to terrorism, particularly uh, violence and uh, violent extremism. And in 2013, we have started to think uh, at the regional level about a, a political declaration. And similarly, we have thought about a common strategy at ECOWAS level uh, in order to counter te terrorism. And uh, uh, we have tried to put in place uh, certain declarations. Our, of course, uh, because our maritime space was causing certain issues, we have also stopped a moment to think about that. And we have thought about illicit acts uh, in, in, this, in the framework of this trans transnational organized crime. We have uh, uh, in this regard, and uh, with my colleague, uh, Martin, we have also proposed at ICWAS a an integrated maritime strategy that was adopted and that allowed us to work on questions pertaining to uh, transactional organized crime uh, that was uh, really pertaining to the maritime level. In order to effectively be able to uh, provide responses at the justice and, and security and to be able to uh, really intervene at this uh, transactional organized crime, we thought that it was very necessary to, necessary to focus on uh, security. That's why in 2016, we were able to provide a political framework at the sector, especially at the security sector. I don't know if, if Ms. Kelly, uh, I, 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 can, I can talk about uh, the question pertaining on the importance of those uh, instruments for uh, African political uh, head of states. Would you allow me to continue, please? Yes, you may take a minute, sir, in order to uh, continue your idea, but I think we will, we will, we will talk about this issue. Uh, don't worry. This is just to say that within this regional integration, uh, the we have we have focus on uh, the principles of uh, of security and the establishment of certain pr pr processes. We have tried to create a favorable space uh, for uh, for this. Uh, to counter transnational organized crime, we have tried to develop some tools and instruments in order to realize a certain coordination uh, as far as the uh, and and between activities and to try to harmonize this uh, uh, the judicial level. We have tried to create a co coordination in order to adapt and to uh, common approaches in terms of security and justice uh, over uh, at the regional level uh, in order at the ECOWAS level. This is uh, what I wanted to say regarding your 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 question. I hope. I hope I have answered it, and uh, I hope we will have the opportunity to expand our ideas regarding this uh, this process. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to follow up with another question. You have uh, touched upon some uh, some interesting. Uh, uh, ideas. What types of regional coordination are we talking about? Are we talking about ECOWAS? Are we talking about the orga organization of chiefs of police? Are we talking, uh, have they been able to follow up effectively uh, this, uh, this area, this area of preventing prevention of transnational organized crime? What is your take on this? Thank you very much, sir. 
Thank you very much for this question. What we need to think about and understand is that the Committee of Chiefs of Police in West Africa is not separated completely independent from ECOWAS. Uh, we, it is somehow interconnected and we're talking uh, here. Uh, I would like to say that this constitutes an a, a, a main part of the uh, ECOWAS Commission. Uh, these are two interrelated entities and uh, and uh, uh, they are they, they become member uh, the chiefs of police uh, organization become an integral part of uh, ECOWAS. Uh, this uh, organ or this entity uh, or this committee is uh, is uh, has a permanent secretariat that is represented by the uh, regional security of the commission of ECOWAS. Uh, the chief of this uh, division is the permanent secretary but at the same time uh, we have two committees we have a subcommittee uh, that's technical that's a charge of, uh, of training and there is another subcommittee that is in charge of uh, uh, other aspects so all of uh, so all of these are taken in charge by the commission and in 2000 since 2009 we have had uh, we have set up a what we call the uh, the chiefs of service of security and it is the ccpo the chiefs of police uh, have become uh, has become an integral part of this process uh, uh, this committee can receive from time to time all of the services and can be in charge of the state members uh, that are in charge of uh, the security and i'm talking about here about member states i'm talking about uh, uh, and I'm talking about here about the mechanisms of 1993. Every year, we organize what we call the General Assembly of CCPO that, uh, that is uh, very well organized. And the chief of the, of the country is always present during this commission. There is the government of, of ECOWAS is present. And uh, there is a two months before a meeting that is organized in order to uh, set up the process uh, at the, at the uh, uh, as General Assembly. We have three days, three uh, meetings that are spread over three days. The, the, the first day is a preparatory meeting. The second uh, meeting, we have the presence of, uh, we have discussion of the agenda of the meeting. And then during the third day, we have the preparation of the report of the three days. Uh, and we have a forum that is organized at the same time in order to discuss about important phenomena. This report that we come up with, and we, we usually come up with, uh, will be transmitted or forwarded to, uh, to the committee of uh, security of uh, ECOWAS. Uh, that will make the necessary uh, decisions or the final decisions. I also said that the permanent secretary of and the division uh, makes sure that all the decisions made at, the, at, at, at these meetings will be put in place and will be implemented. Uh, in order to put them into place or in order to implement them. We do organize some training sessions uh, uh, with the regional uh, and Interpol services. We also organize at the same time what we call uh, uh, annual trainings of uh, of uh, of uh, judicial police officers, uh, especially uh, pertaining uh, trainings pertaining to transnational organized crime. And we coordinate with Interpol and with other uh, offices. Um, uh, with the chiefs of police, we we have put in place a system. We call it a CPO systems. It's the uh, the, the information police, uh, U.S. Uh, police information system. It's a system that has three levels. Uh, at the regional level, we are we are in we we try to inform the the states to create a database uh, in order for the services of security uh, so this this database on criminality is very important and we insist on that aspect uh, because it allows us to follow up what's happening in order to exchange uh, the uh, information regarding this uh, process every country uh, through interpol uh, can have access to this database at the international level, uh, thanks to secured uh, networks. Uh, at the same time, at the regional level, uh, the states are also in a position to sit together in order to uh, create a, a kind of regional database that is specific to uh, the regional level uh, in, this, uh, in this regard. And I mean the transnational organized crime. 
uh, in the reports uh, that uh, uh, we we come up with, uh, we the division of uh, ECOWAS uh, focuses on certain aspects uh, at the commission level. I think uh, that these th this is the information that I wanted to provide regarding the tools and the instruments that we use, and I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Uh, merci. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Diang, for your comments. I will now turn back to Mr. Uh, Ailey. Could I ask, um, Martin, um, what kinds of cross-border coordination are different SADC countries engaged in to counter transnational organized crime? Um, I know um, you have a lot to say about that, having worked with SADC officials on various strategic elements of their approach. So could you share, please? Ah, and Martin, could you unmute your microphone, please? Thank you. Yeah, sorry for that. Um, uh, thank you again, uh, once again, Dr. Kelly. Um, I think the type of cooperation in Southern Africa is really based on how the threat is defined. Um, for the past several decades, uh, one of the dominant forms of insecurity in Southern Africa uh, in the Southern Africa region has been the prevalence of transnational organized crime. The region has been blighted by several forms of organized crime, uh, but in the past decade, uh, some of these have become particularly notorious. Although uh, uh, drug trafficking has always been in the card, the past decade has seen the emergence of various, uh, of various crimes, such as wildlife crime, especially poaching, car thefts and hijacking, human trafficking, money laundering, and illicit financial flows and illicit arms proliferation. Uh, in my view, these are the critical issues that have galvanized uh, SADC approach or the Southern African Development Community's approach to uh, cooperation. Now, to combat these uh, issues, these uh, crimes that I've just mentioned, um, the region has adopted a multi sectorial approach to cross-border coordination. While the Southern African Development Community, the SADC, has adopted a number of instruments or provided the center for political cooperation, the Interpol has also provided the framework for operational cooperation within the region. SADEX, the main SADEX instrument, there are many of them. I will only probably for your information uh, mention just a few strategic and important ones or the ones that are directly related to the topic. Um, the, the SADEX protocol on politics, defense and security cooperation um, is the protocol that governs aspect of promoting peace and security in the Southern African region. So it is the overall framework upon which other instruments relating to peace and security have drawn from. Uh, and therefore that protocol, uh, the implementation of that protocol relates to the fight against organized crime. SADEC has also adopted the protocol on wildlife conservation, which uh, was adopted in 1996. Um, SADEC has also adopted the protocol on firearms. This one was first adopted in 2001. Uh, it was uh, revised uh, and the revised uh, uh, protocol was adopted just last year in August by the head of state. Uh, there are also a number of strategies that uh, um, the, the SADEC uh, framework uh, has in place. Um, we have the strategic plan of action for combating trafficking in persons um, 2016 to 2019. It was adopted in 2015. We also have uh, a strategy for gender-based violence. Gender-based violence, by the way, in Southern Africa is a critical issue and some are viewing it as an aspect or one of the key organized crime issues in the region. Now this uh, strategy and action plan um, was adopted in 2017. Um, SADEC also has in place the, the law, the regional law enforcement and anti-poaching 
strategy, which was adopted in 2015. Um, it also has a strategy relating to the illegal migration, uh, for combating illegal migration and smuggling of migrants. And of course, um, a regional counterterrorism strategy that was adopted in 2015. So these are the major instrument governing cooperation on transnational organized crime issues. And of course, I'm not uh, going to talk about the, the conventions on extradition, mutual legal assistance, and other supporting instruments, which are equally very important for cooperation within the region. And especially uh, the ones relating to extradition and mutual legal assistance, which directly relate to operational cooperation in this area. But I would say bilateral forms of cooperation has uh, been dominant. Um, they have been widely practiced among neighboring countries uh, in the region. Um, at the regional level, I think the adoption of the SADC law enforcement and anti poaching strategy in 2015 helped to intensify cross-border cooperation among wildlife authorities including parks and conservationists, which was not previously there before. And I can say with confidence that cooperation in this area actually helped to combat the phenomenon of poaching, which was becoming a notorious issue in the region to the extent that in the past uh, four years or so, the region has recorded a declining trend in poaching. There, we also have uh, a number of institutions that, um, or agencies, um, which I will refer to as uh, sectors, um, in order to really see the different areas in which cooperation uh, has taken place. Uh, I think chief among them is the cooperation uh, uh, among the police, uh, the so-called police to police uh, cooperation which is coordinated by the Southern African Regional Police Corporation uh, Organization, um, which within SADC is referred to as a police subcommittee. Now this committee coordinates everything that has to do with uh, the police. And um, the chiefs of police meet annually uh, during their annual general meetings where they look at various issues uh, relating to organized crime. But there are also, of course, uh, subcommittees that meet more frequently and they actually deal with critical issues uh, relating to organized crime, whether it relate to information sharing or intelligence sharing or whatever um, it could be. And they address uh, different thematic issues under organized crime. Then we also have the uh, the uh, industry development and trade uh, sector, which uh, coordinate aspects that relate to organized crime in this sector. Um, we also have the finance, uh, investment, and customs uh, sector, which coordinate custom matters, particularly um, uh, borders, to make sure that the flow of goods and services conform to the regulations of the region and of course, um, to sort out criminal element. Um, we also have the infrastructure and services uh, sector, which deals with organized crime in this area. And of course, um, the sector relating to finance, investment, uh, and custom, which, or which is what I just said, sorry. Um, we also have the food and agriculture and natural resources uh, sector, which organize um, um, uh, coordinating events relating to um, food, agriculture, and natural resources, the illegal exploitation of natural resources, which uh, was becoming prevalent in the region, um, such as gold, coal, uh, and many other sectors that have suffered from illegal exploitation. We also have the social and human uh, development and social program sector, the policy planning and resource mobilization sectors. All of these sectors help to coordinate um, SADC activities or regional activities um, relating to organized crime, but of course not li uh, limited to organized crime, but in broad uh, um, manner, in a broader manner. 
Um, but what what one point I want to highlight here is that the the approach that had been uh, taken until uh, this year um, has been really a fragmented approach, um, either uh, on thematic basis or um, on ad hoc uh, basis. Um, but the understanding that uh, this um, uh, ad hoc and fragmented approach has not been able to yield um, um, the desired result. Um, SADC uh, and its member state decided, you know, that may be time to bring together these various initiatives um, to uh, come up with a regional framework that could um, governize action in these various sectors. This is where the idea for the uh, elaboration of the SADEC um, uh, strategy against transnational organized crime uh, came into, into being. Um, the strategy is still very much uh, at its uh, infancy, at its uh, very first draft, um, but it's already bringing together the various, the critical sectors um, that uh, have uh, actually um, inhabited organized crime in the region. Um, the, the strategy, again, um, as I said, that it's going to bring together the, the various initiatives that have been taken. I've mentioned some of the instruments um, that have been adopted, some of the action plans and strategies that have been adopted uh, on thematic issues in organized crime. Uh, what this strategy then seeks to do is to um, really accelerate the implementation of these uh, uh, other initiatives uh, relating to transnational um, organized crime. I think I'm uh, exceeding my time. I would like to stop here and uh, probably take more questions on this uh, uh, during the uh, discussion session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. That sounds good. I'm sure there will be lots of questions for both panelists as we move um, towards that time. So we have, um, I have one question left for each of our panelists and then we will move into the Q&A. So um, Martin, could I turn back to you first, maybe just for about five minutes? Um, what kinds of inter-regional coordination efforts are underway in Southern Africa, um, in, in the regions you're looking at um, to counter transnational organized crime? Could you just say a few words on what you've noticed inter-regionally? Yes, indeed. Um, uh, of course, uh, I think various regions are thinking um, about how to effectively deal with the threats posed by transnational organized crime. Uh, and we are seeing a lot of movement towards uh, coordination, um, not just bilateral or the limited regional coordination that we've seen before. Um, since um, 2015, um, the idea emerged, and I'm very happy to share the uh, podium with uh, Dr. Uh, Dieng, um, who was um, the initiator of the idea of bringing together um, the West African um, Police Chiefs Committee and the uh, Central African Police Chiefs Committee, uh, CAPCO. Um, now, when the two first uh, came together, it was an initiative really to bridge the gap in terms of police to police cooperation and to deal with some of the critical issues uh, relating to extradition and mutual legal assistance. The fact that these instruments are uh, too legal, uh, both in scope and their implementation, to some extent, there's very limited implementation of um, this instrument, probably because uh, countries sometimes um, do not want interference from outside and sometimes because of the nature of organized crime issues, which sometimes have state collision where some state officials might be involved um, in uh, organized crime issues. Coordination becomes very, very limited. But what we have seen uh, recently, um, since the initial uh, breakthrough in terms of um, Central and West African police chiefs coming together to adopt a common uh, platform for uh, operational cooperation. We've also seen recently um, the um, coming together of Central Africa and the East Africa, the Central African Police Chiefs Committee, CAPCO, and the uh, East African, Eastern African Police Chiefs uh, Cooperation Organization, IAPCO, uh, coming together to sign an agreement to uh, again, facilitate inter-regional cooperation. 
because if you if you if you look at the way cooperation is being conducted, we, uh, especially uh, the hyper transnational nature of organized crime, where you know criminals do not really uh, look at uh, interregional borders or national borders and so on and so forth. You need a framework that can allow the police to cross certain borders without having to be impeded by uh, protocols, by uh, uh, or tedious legal issues and so on. So um, the whole purpose of this um, entire regional cooperation is to achieve this goal, to facilitate uh, the, the, the uh, how can I call it, the chase against the pursuit of criminals who often use uh, borders as we have seen uh, before where they use border towns, they escape to other countries because they're fleeing from justice in one country to the other. Now, these agreements are to facilitate uh, police and to help solve this problem um, that uh, criminals pose. Um, let me give you just some of the key provisions of this new uh, 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 agreement. Uh, we have provisions relating to exchange and sharing of information and data. So cooperation in this uh, uh, area is to bring together police uh, uh, institutions who can share critical information um, that can help um, for the investigation and prosecution of uh, suspects. We also have the handover requests. Previously, it has been extremely difficult for police to handle uh, uh, requests for handing over of criminals because sometimes there is no bilateral agreement, there is no multilateral framework to allow for that. Now, this agreement facilitate that. They facilitate um, the handing over of suspects from one police to the other across uh, the border. What it also, what this agreement uh, also do is that they, they help to facilitate investigation. You know, cross-border investigation has been not only very expensive, but it has also been hindered by a lot of uh, legal issues and protocols making it very difficult. Now, with this agreement in place, it's going to facilitate um, the operational investigation, uh, which police can actually facilitate that among themselves without having to pursue the tedious uh, legal bottlenecks that sometimes exist, especially if you follow the mutual legal assistance and extradition framework. They also provide for uh, measures in terms of how do you treat apprehended suspects, suspects that are arrested in one country and are wanted in, uh, in another country. Now, there will be now common standard in terms of how these apprehended suspects are treated across the board uh, in Africa, particularly in regions where they have signed uh, this common agreement. Um, there is also uh, the provision to standardize um, uh, how to treat wanted persons. So if a wanted person is declared, what measures are to be taken uh, by both countries, the requesting countries and the host country? Um, this agreement provides for common measures. These are very practical measures in terms of how police deal with these different issues because they are really aspect of police operations. Police uh, of policing, uh, and therefore they help the police and other law enforcement agencies that are involved in the fight against transnational organized crime to utilize these measures to facilitate operational aspect of combating and preventing uh, crime. I would like to end here, and uh, hopefully we can we can dwell mo uh, more in uh, into this aspect in the discussion session. I thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. We can delve in um, as people wish in the Q&A if they would like more detail. Um, so finally, Dr. Dieng, j'ai une dernière question pour Dr. Dieng, I have a last question for you. Perhaps it take five minutes or so. What type of interregional cooperation is underway in West Africa, Central Africa and the Gulf of Guinea to fight transnational organized crime. We know you have a lot of experience in this area. If you could share some of that with us, it will enrich our question and answer session later. Thank you so much. Coordination between West Africa and Central Africa to fight transnational organized crime essentially occurs at 
four levels. First, the first time this occurred, essentially it concerned a very recurrent phenomenon in the region, the phenomenon of trafficking, of uh, uh, human trafficking. So as regards this, the, the look, ECOWAS and the East African uh, Regional Organization through regional cooperation put in place an action plan to fight human trafficking, especially women and children. And we've been working under this framework agreement since 2009 to implement this agreement. So in 2009, another type of agreement occurred, or since then, there's been an attempt to develop cooperation between uh, ECOWAS and uh, SADC as regards maritime activities, the efforts that were undertaken between Cameroon and Nigeria and the main action of President Yaponi, who called on the uh, on Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the UN. This resulted in the historic summit of chiefs of state and government between ECOWAS, uh, SADC and the GCC. This led to the adoption of three uh, actions, the amendment of, of, of understanding between SADC and ECOWAS and GCC on security in West and Central Africa, a declaration of chiefs of state and governments of Central and West Africa on security and safety in the region and a code of conduct for repression of armed activities against um, naval traffic and illegal activity in the maritime space. And there was then the implementation of an interregional cooperation center. I was the first director of the center. It was uh, set up between 2014 and 2015. And this was supposed to be the summit of uh, a, a maritime security architecture that would uh, cover the Gulf of Guinea, Senegal. And there was a, a meeting uh, of these three organizations to discuss various activities in these regions. We developed what we called maritime zones that each zone was coordinated by a particular center in West Africa. In Central Africa, there's two A and B, A and D. In Central Africa, three others, zone one, zone E, F, and G. In the question and answer period, I can tell you a little bit more as the head of the regional security division, I am the focal point for ECOWAS. In 2018, in interregional cooperation, the heads of state and governments of ECOWAS and SADC intervened. On July 31st, 2018, we had a declaration of peace, security, stability, and the fight against terrorism in these spaces. And since then, we have made a great deal of effort to set up an implementation plan. But as you know, in Santa there's been quite a bit of reform. So now we're going to start operational, oper putting in operation this effort. Um, and so um, the focal point will be responsible for that. That's my division. So my colleague Martin really uh, emphasized the initiative of the cooperation among the various uh, chiefs of police in West and Central Africa. This has led the police to work together to, and directly to avoid different uh, impediments as regards extraditions and accelerate the process. So criminals think 
that there's a space where they can do what they want if they go from West to Central Africa. So this agreement makes law enforcement action much more efficient in the region, makes the region much safer and very much more under the control of law and justice.